Hi there everyone, Evans got your mentor and we back again. So guys, welcome to the first step into your life changing journey. Yeah guys, this is where it all starts. We're going to take you back exactly where it all started and how we were able to reach this level today. So guys, we know currently we are starting with the winter season. We're going to give you guys a nice reason for you to stay indoors because once we are done with this course, your life will never be the same again. We're going to show you guys the best way in order for you to become successful is to do what people did before they were successful. You need to know what we used to do before in order to reach the level that we're at today. And that's exactly what we're doing guys. We basically broke down a three lessons course. Lesson one, we're going to cover introduction, all information, our technical analysis, and the secrets to becoming a consistently profitable trader. We're taking you guys all the way back. And as we continue, you're going to be able to understand how we got to reach this level. What kind of information we used to have that led to us becoming the professional traders we are today. So guys, the reason we're doing all of this is because we don't want to give you guys fishes and end up depending on us. We would rather teach you how to fish so that you guys can represent us as well and get to share the information that we gave you and basically get to a point where we're able to impact the world in a positive way. So remember guys, we're doing this whole entire course. The first lesson is going to be more than an hour long and we're doing all of this completely for free. So it will be a major appreciation guys if you share the video, hit the like button, subscribe. Let's roll the intro guys. Get into the video if it's with your mentor. Let's get it. Hi there, welcome. I would personally like to thank you for taking this opportunity to allow me and my teammates to be your Forex mentors, right? So what we have done is we have designed this whole entire online course into helping you become a self-sufficient trader. So without wasting any further time, let's jump into our first lesson. So what we're going to cover in this first lesson is introduction to Forex. We're going to cover technical analysis. We're going to cover what is fundamental analysis and what are trend lines, right? So we have set up for you these three basic steps that are going to help you master how to trade Forex. So you're going to start trading Forex. You're going to need first to familiarize yourself with our trading strategies. You're going to need to know our terminologies, educational article about the Forex market in order for you to understand the mechanics of the market. So what we want to do is we want to separate you from most traders, right? We want you to forget everything that you think you know about the Forex market because in order for you to master how to trade, you're going to need to have the strategy that you're going to work on. So you need to master your own craft in order to master how to trade Forex. So secondly, we're going to need you to open a demo account first before working on a real account. You know, it's entirely the same to real account. The only difference is that you're using visual money, which is not real money. Right, so we have a video showing you how to open a demo account. So we want you to open a demo account of a thousand, and with all the skills that we're gonna do, share with you, you wanna take a thousand account into a five thousand account. What we wanna do is we want you to invest your time in knowledge first. We want you to master how to trade first before going to a real account because most of the time people complain and say that forex is a scam because they're only investing in something they don't even understand. So for you, understanding how to trade, we are here to guide you that some mistakes are not necessary. So we're going to guide you in order for you to master how to trade Forex in the best possible way. So secondly, you should open a demo account, like we said. And the third step is to now, once you've done the second step, you now you get started on Forex trading. So once you've done those two previous steps, you can now start to safely begin how to trade. So we try to separate you from gamblers right we try to make sure that you don't use big bets that's what gamblers do as traders we trade traders understand that in order for you to win you need to have a statistical advantage and that's what we do we understand what's most important about trading is understanding risk management and you understand it too in order for you to win in forex you need to have knowledge knowledge gives you an edge over the market and that edge will ensure that you are a consistently profitable trader so firstly we're going to discuss what is forex forex is short for foreign exchange right so what we do in foreign exchange is changing one country's currency for another country's currency right so that's what mostly what we do in forex trading so most of the time people ask me what is it that we actually trade in forex the answer is simple it's that we trade money 
because you're not buying anything physical forex trading can be confusing to most people and you can think of it of buying a currency as uh, buying a share in a particular country just like buying stocks of a company so the price of a currency is usually a direct reflection of a market's opinion on the current and the future health of a respective economy so in forex trading when you say buy japanese yen you're basically buying a share in the japanese economy so when you buy a share in a japanese economy you are actually betting that the japanese economy is doing well and will even get better as time goes so once you sell those shares back to the market hopefully you're going to end up with some profits so in general the exchange rate of a currency versus another currency is a reflection of a condition of a country's economy compared to other countries economy let me just give an example against like let me say usd dollar this is south african rand which is the czar the dollar has no actual value unless you actually compare it with the rent so a dollar is one dollar and when you take it to rent it's actually 14 rands so as you can see if the dollar improves it means the band will actually suffer and it will decrease so what we do is we understand the difference between those two and that's how you make profits so as you move on with the course you can understand how you're going to do that as well and that is what forex trading is so in forex we have our major currency pairs that we trade and firstly we have which is uh, euro usd secondly we have usd jpy which is the dollar versus the japanese yen i don't recommend using this pair once you're a beginner this pair is for people who are a bit more advanced as you know it's extremely volatile so thirdly we have gb usd that is the great british pound versus the dollar we then have USD Swiss and we have USD versus CAD, which is Canadian dollar. That is one of my favorite pairs as well, which is extremely volatile, but it respects, you know, support and resistance that you're going to see as well as we go on. So second last, we have OD versus USD, that's Australian versus the United States dollar. We have NZD USD, which is New Zealand versus the United States dollar. So those are the currency pairs you're going to be focusing on. So now, what is technical analysis, right? Technical analysis is the framework in which Forex traders study price action. Yes, we use price action in order for us to better understand what is the next price movement, right? The theory is that a person can look at the historical price movements and determine the current trading conditions and the potential price movement. Like I've said before, we use the, the data from the past in order to help us understand what is the next price movement so the main evidence for using technical analysis is that theoretically all the current market information is reflected in price so if price reflects all the information that is out there then price action is all one would really need to make a trade so now that you have had the, the old phrase that history tends to repeat itself that's what we actually use in product trading we use the data from the past we use what we've seen from the markets which actually helps us you know know what's going to happen next so what is basically that what technical analysis is all about if the price level is held as a key support or resistance in the past traders will keep an eye for it and they base their trades around that historical price level so technical analysts look for similar patterns that have been formed in the past and will form the trade idea believing the price will act in the same way that like it did before so we use we use the data from the past to help us understand what will happen in the future but now we are discussing what is fundamental analysis, right? Fundamental analysis is basically trading news, news trading. So fundamental analysis is a way of looking at the forex market by analyzing the economic, social, and the political forces that may affect the supply and demand of an asset. So if you've done economics, I feel like you can, you know, you can understand what supply and demand is. Supply and demand uh, help us understand the currency exchange rate. So using supply and demand as an indicator of where the price will be headed is easy. The hard part is analyzing all the factors that actually affect supply and demand. So in other words, you have to look at different factors that determine whose economy is rocking, like a Taylor Swift song, and whose economy sucks. So fundamentals allows us to actually know when the economy is doing bad and when the economy is doing good. So you have to understand the reason of why and how certain events actually affect the market like unemployment rates affect the country's economy monetary policy which ultimately affects the level of demand of its currency so the idea behind this type of analysis is that the country's current and future economic outlook is good their currency should strengthen 
right? If it's good, then it would actually strengthen. So the better shape of a country's economy is that the more foreign businesses and investors have in a country, the result in the pages of a country's currency to obtain those assets. So in a nutshell, that's what fundamental is. Fundamentals help us understand what will happen next by how the economy is doing in terms of, you know, the economic, social, and the political forces that actually affect the entire economy. So, fourthly, we have trend lines, right? Trend lines are those lines that you guys see when you look at the chart, people that people put in the chart that help them understand what is the next price movement, right? So trend lines are probably the most common form of technical analysis in product trading. They are probably one of the most underutilized. So if done correctly, they can help you be accurate. So unfortunately, most traders don't draw them correctly and we want to help you understand how to use trend lines, right? They're very, very strong and they're going to help you as well know how to trade forex so these are the trend line guys and uh, just like that we're gonna cover the last lesson of our introduction so we have three different type of trend lines we have the upper trend which is seen by higher highs and higher lows we have a downtrend which has lower highs and we have sideways trends right and those are the tools that we're gonna need in order for us to understand how to trade forex using trend lines as you can see, trend lines here help us understand that we have an uptrend, downtrend, sideways trend, and overall, we you will learn how to use these trends in order for you to master how to play Forex, right? And just like that, we are done with our first lesson. Uh, thanks for tuning in and get ready for the next one. Hi there, this is your mentor, the first goat. So today, we actually covered one of my favorites, and that is technical analysis. So from now on, guys, I want you to actually pay more attention as if you master this course right now, I'm talking about the chapter we're on, you can actually be more than just a consistent trader, you can become one of the best. So the problem with technical analysis is a lot of people do trade technical analysis and they're not seeing the, these are results. The problem is they don't understand that using technical analysis is like any other tool. You need to master how to use it. So when properly applied, it can actually give you the desired results. So without wasting any further time, let's jump in. So I'm going to first start with what is technical analysis. So technical analysis is a trading discipline employed to evaluate investments and identify trading opportunities by analyzing statistical trends gathered from a trading activity, such as price movement and volume. Like they're saying, trading technical analysis is like a trading discipline. We want you guys to be disciplined because once you master using this tool, it can be more than just a profitable trader, right? I want you to understand that one of the best traders in the world was able to take an account from $1.6,000 to $200 million just using technical analysis. And it's a very important chapter and I want you to concentrate. So as technical analysts, we focus on patterns of price movements, trading signals, and various other analytical charting tools to evaluate a security strength or weakness. So Using technical analysis, we are able to see the market's weakness. So we use technical analysis to identify what is the market condition. That's what we do. We use it as a tool to know where we're supposed to buy and sell. So we use it to basically understand our entry points and our exit points. So most people only focus on the entry and they don't know when to exit their trade. So we're going to cover that as well. So the tools that we're talking about here are drawing tools candlesticks and chart patterns. We're also going to cover some of the most important indicators. Yes, some people do say indicators are lagging because they don't understand the purpose of indicators. Indicators are there to help you, you know, understand what is the market condition. They're not there to help you understand to basically predict the future. That's why they're actually using them incorrectly. So I'm going to help you how to use these patterns and the tools that you need correctly. First, you need to first understand the purpose of the tools that you have. That is technical analysis so what it does is it helps us understand the market condition it helps us understand the area of value our entry and exit trigger so what i want to do is i want to help you understand how to combine all these tools to find high probability trading setups yes i'm saying high probability trading setups that's just the difference between a beginner and a professional trader what a beginner does when they enter into a trade they enter without a stop loss because they're saying a trade is going to be a definite win. And that's an exact opposite of a professional. A professional, what they do, they enter into a trade with a stop loss and take profit in place. 
because their market really don't care about your setup, right? So hence, we always want to make sure we always have a statistical edge to make sure we can become consistently profitable. That is following our trading rules. We're going to start first with our drawing tools. We're going to be focusing on things like trend line, trend channel, support and resistance that you covered on a previous lesson and our trading setups, right? So let me just make quickly show you what is our trend line. Right? So a trend line is, let me just say the market is on a bearish trend. So using a trend line, guys, I don't like to use just a simple line. I like using zones because they increase the accuracy of your analysis. So let me just say we have our line here and I'll probably like to have it as a zone. So we use this as a trend line because we need to understand our area of value. So we understand as long as we're on this side, we're looking for, you know, for short. So short is basically sales. We're looking for to continue selling as long as we're under this trend. And that is the reason why we're using trend lines. And when we have it both sides like this, we call it a trend channel, right? So we understand that as long as we're in here, we're in a strong bearish trend. So that's me explaining what a trend and a trend channel is. Support and resistance was covered. And if you still need a recap, it's as simple as understanding the setups here. So at the bottom, we have our support and resistance at the top. So it will be support, resist, supporting our trade, resisting and supporting. That's what that is used for. And trading setups you're going to see as we continue with our lesson. I want you first to understand why we want to teach you support and resistance more effectively because once you, you actually know how to use this, you're going to learn not only to enter but where to exit too. Because as technical analysts, we are focused primarily on identifying the current market trend, including support and resistance areas. So once you master how to use support and resistance, you're going to learn how to exit, which is what most people overlook. Exiting a trade is one of the psychological factors. It's easy to enter into a trade, but to exit because what people do, they enter into a trade, right? And they let their losses run. They don't have an exit strategy, which is something that you need to, you need to cut your losses while they're still short. Let me say that you entered your buy here, right? You basically made your analysis and you thought it was going even way up for a buy. Understanding that we have resistance and support, you're going to see that the market can even cross this level here because we haven't seen that yet. You know, we're not saying it's impossible. We're just using probability is we haven't yet. So when you enter a buy here, you don't have an exit strategy. So you're just going to let that loss run, hoping it's going to go up. And you can see closely here, it's just going to blow your account. So it's important to have your exit strategy on point. So as you can see, this is the levels of support and resistance, and they can help us understand how long to hold our trades. For example, let me say I'm entering my buy here. Hopefully, I don't want to hold it up until next year because I understand I have a strong level of resistance here. So that's where I want to close my trade. That's if I'm swinging, right? So now without wasting any further time, let's continue. So trend lines and trend channels, right? In every trending market, whether the trend is going up or down, there are buy zones and sell zones which are divided by trend lines. So understanding the buy and the sell zones will lead you to being a profitable trader. It can lead you to being having profitable trades. Reason being is when you properly know how to place your trend lines, you can easily know that, you know, where is your area of value? Where you're going to look for your sales and your buys? And that's what we're trying to do. So I'll sell high and buy low. So like here, this will be our nice levels of, of, of sell, right? Using our trend line because it's properly put. We know that when we reach these points, we're not short. You understand? Because we're saying it's been respecting this trend. We want to let it continue doing that. So it's important to know that as long as it's on this side, we call it our sell zone, right? Only when it crosses, that's when we actually look for our buys upon retest. When it crosses and it's not a fake out, but actually retest it, looking for more buy areas, that's where we look for our buys. So we're going to see this in our charts too. So let's go to one of the pairs that we might have. So I want to place my trends line more accurately by letting it touch where we have most touches. So as you can see, this is our trend line. So what we are saying is we are looking for buy opportunities as long as it's respecting this trend. So whenever we cross and retest, that's where we're going to be looking for our sell opportunities. 
right so as long as the market is actually running this side that's where we're going to continue looking for our buys and that's the purpose of using our trend lines so now i'm going to help you how to draw correctly your trend lines because when they're properly executed or not only trend lines but support and resistance because when they're properly executed they can actually ensure that you're gonna get profitable trades so when you do that what you're gonna need to do first you need to zoom out and see the overall picture right you're gonna need to also draw out the most obvious levels there are some levels are too obvious i'm gonna show you and you need to adjust to most touches the reason is what we have most touches that becomes a more strong level right so now let's face the chart and let's see how we can analyze a few pairs so when we start with an analysis guys first what we need to do we need to use a higher time frame right you need to see the overall picture you can start from a weekly to monthly so i'm just gonna go daily here because it's even a clearer picture so all we need to do first we need to start with our support and resistance so now our level our level of support okay it seems like we have two strong levels here i'm just gonna place my first one here and the last one is not that important now because looking at the current market you know it's still too far to just put that there i'm just I'm just putting it for the sake of the video now so when you do your first analysis you need to first start with your the support and resistance because what we need to know is we know this is now a strong level of selling this is where we would sell when we get there this is now our sell zone so here and here we have our two buy zones right so because we know we need to buy low and possibly sell high so now let's go to here and then so next what we want to do is to draw our trend correctly need to adjust it to have more touches so you can see here i have my touch i have my touch here and here as you can see guys it's important for me to have it like this because that's where i'm having i'm getting most of my touches because i'm identifying as a key level and the head like i said before i don't like using just one line because you know i want to make it into a zone to also understand that you know i wanted to be more accurate when i enter my trades so this is now my level of, of trend so meaning that when we're in this side this is where i'm going to be looking for my buy areas so now that we've crossed this line now i'm looking for my sell entries so now how to find out about those sell entries is to first understand that when you cross a trend you don't just jump in with the self you needed to retest first to confirm that you, you are now going for yourself so what we like doing is is to understand the orders you have people don't understand their tools and that's why they don't actually uh, become profitable in trading so for example let me go to place order here and people only use market execution of which if you have a small account i don't recommend using market execution all the time so it's always better to fish and wait for your trades and I want to show you what I mean by that. So, for example, if I come here, you need to see that we have pending orders. So, we actually have five orders. We have an execution, we have a buy limit, sell limit, buy stop, and sell stop. So, I'm going to explain the purpose of each. So, when let's say you have an entry, right? And the market is basically ranging like this, right? And you're seeing a nice buy being set. But you, you know you won't be there to enter that buy right so what you can do is you can set up a buy stop what a buy stop is is a pending order that triggers an entry for you when you're not there so for example the purpose of sending a buy stop is when you see that i have a strong level of support here and you're expecting the market to shoot up but you don't want to enter first because it's going to be playing around a lot you want to make sure your account is safe especially when it's small so you're going to set up your buy stop and when it shoots up you're already in the trade so what are the most important things that you need when you set a trade you need three points you need to have your entry level secondly you need to have your exit when you have a loss and lastly you need to have your exit when you have a profit so your entries should be you are actually um risking one percent to gain two percent doing that ensures that you always have your statistical edge you only have to be there that's basically how you fish for your entries right it helps you win more entries basically you always want to increase your edge 
to always win the long game right and that's why we use a buy stop for so what a buy limit is you saw that you have a strong uh, let me just say the market is still playing around in here right and you saw that it's actually um cooking to test this level and you won't be around so what you do is you place a buy limit so we use a buy stop to execute by going through and use a buy limit to execute that it's no longer going down it's actually going to go back up so a limit will stop you from going back down and a stop is you executing by going straight up so that's the buy and the buy limit and the, and the buy stop so you place your buy limit here to have a better entry that is buying at the lowest possible point so your limit is there once it touches it and goes back up you're in the trade and you even have a better trade so that's the buy limit and the buy stop so the opposite for a sell stop i'm going to make this brief and easy so uh for your sell stop it's when you actually go down your sell is executed so for your sell limit you're saying it's going to stop and come back down and that's just how we cover our orders guys so execution is just getting to entry is exactly where it is so now we are here so how do we enter this trade now so what we want to do first we need to identify our key level structure of support why it's stopping there so i'm seeing a nice level here of support right so where i want my entries will be is to identify the nice reversal so i'm seeing a nice level here and basically the blue line will be my last one but why would i do that i'm seeing that after a cross i want to enter upon retest so by so doing i'm seeing the solve going from here or basically from around here and now let's continue with the current slide so now let's recap what the things that we're going to need when you actually do a technical analysis is to first learn how to draw right so when you draw pen lines to support the resistance your trend channels you need to first zoom out to see the entire picture and the train tools that you're going to use are your trend line train channel support and resistance so now what we're going to cover next is candlesticks very important right this is a method of actually reading your price chart you know you're going to be able to find your open your high your low and your close so they're very useful to help us find our entry and our exit points they can help us act as an entry trigger in our exit tree how can you read the candlestick so i want to start first with the candlesticks so now when you have a bullish candlestick open it will open at the bottom so when you see a low here it means it opened it went down and went back up to create a high and went back down to close around here hence this is why we have this one like this so it is an opposite for a sell. So when you know how to properly use these candlesticks, you can actually it's a wall, you know, and know when to enter and exit. So we use candlesticks in high, you know, bigger time frames. So now let's go to the next. Slide. So now the three most important candlesticks that we use is the bullish golfing candlestick and the, the bearish engulfing. This is basically the same thing, just opposites. So for bullish engulfing, when a candlestick is open and closed and a buy candlestick opens. And it's bigger more bigger than the last one it's basically telling us that you know the buyers are now getting strength to push the market up so the sellers are losing their selling power and the buyers are now in control hence we now have a bullish engulfing which is a nice reversal setup right so the opposite for, for bearish engulfing that's when now the sellers are in control and we see a nice reversal from from a bullish trend so the next ones are the shooting star and the inverted hammer so another one the one i like too is at the morning star so the opposite will be an evening star you're gonna see you're gonna be able to see them in your charts too and they're very nice to spot and nice to help us with trigger and exit so now let's recap candlesticks candlesticks are a method that you usually use to read price chart and price level so we use them as an entry and exit indicator they are very powerful candlesticks the ones that we use that is engulfing pattern the hammer and shooting star morning stuff right so that's the candlesticks that we use and uh, let's see if we can spot a few what we want to do is uh, like we said before we want to continue with a sell until we have a cross of resistance so also something i want to note is that when we have a reversal like this this now becomes also a level of structure of support because we were selling now the market's reversed 
it now acts as a level of support so we're looking for future buys as well so we're understanding that you know how to place your support and resistance is going to help you identify those killer buy entries so this is our nice buy zone as you can see here so you want to enter at a retest as you can see it's a nice retest and how did you actually see that being formed you can look closely here using that daily chart with a higher time frame you can see what yes that's right that is the morning star you see not only was it a retest it gave us a nice morning star which showed up right so you will basically have your stop loss around here in your first tp and second tp so we would have lost one but we always win two okay it would seem that we have one of the nice setups too and we actually had an entry like this one this is now the evening star as you can see we have a nice evening star here which is also supported by a resistance right so it is it has acted a resistance before so we know it's still the resistance so it's important to know where you put those resistance and support to show you that that i'm sure it's still a key level as you can see if you know how to place your support and resistance you can see that this is still a key level of support as you can see that was a nice key level not only was it a cross cross of resistance retesting supporting which is becoming a resistance and then the evening star in our trade so that's basically losing one to gain six so what we want to do is something i want to share with you guys if we look here we had a support here right so you could have basically getting out here because this one was in here first so you can actually bag this much pips right so i want to show you something important that i want you to note what we try to do so guys i want you to understand that what we try to do is what amateurs avoid doing for a trader you need to know that you don't have a problem with losing 10 trades because we minimize our losses by having a stop loss in place you can easily lose 10 small trades and win one trade and that will create you well the reason i'm saying this is because you have your account right and you're losing those 10 small trades but you only win one big and that will change your game so what most people do is they do the exact opposite right they win small 10 trades and only take one big loss no stop loss in place like the one i've shown you and they blow their account that's what the majority does i want to show you how we grow a small account so we once grew a small account and we're able to grow this account by actually fishing for profits as you can see my execution was using buy stops and sell limits so i once grew this account from eight dollars and i took it to a hundred so as you can see you know i want you to see the trades that i took right buy stop look at it look at the petty owners you know sell limits and you miss some trades but it helps you miss losses and you enter the trade that you want so using our strategy you can beg 40 to 20 trades in a month you only need to win 50 percent to be profitable as long as you win half the time using our risk ratio you're already winning so you understand the power strategy is basically being disciplined this is why my favorite chapter as long as you master technical analysis you can overall always win so this one is the account that we used we took it from basically 10k we took this account of ours from 10k and we were able to grow it to 20k right using only small lots to just test the strategy that's the importance that i want you to bear in mind if they really like. so now let's move further so with chart patterns we've already covered that we want to enter at retests right this is the one of the most important things so now technical analysis use chart patterns to analyze this emotion and subsequent market movements to understand trends right we use these charts of ours to understand how to increase you know our edge so what you want to do is you want to always make sure that you enter when you have an edge that helps you win the long game if you can understand what i'm trying to say as a professional trader you need to know that the most important thing is to have a statistical edge that's how you're going to win the long game every time so you can have a bad week but you never have a bad month that's what i want you to understand so professional technical analysts also have developed numerous types of trading systems to help them forecast and trade press movements like the strategies that we apply i told you as long as you know how to apply your tools you can reach your desired results so what we use is we use ascending triangle that is the one that you see here we use flags okay i don't have a flag here let me show you what a flag look like so let me just 
so basically what a flag will look like is something like this so the market will basically come from a buy and play around play around play around play around, play around, play around here and shoot down so this is like if you look closely it's like a flag this is the setup that we use so these are the most important thing so we we'll also use head and shoulder and i taught you how to actually apply it theoretically you're gonna also have to apply it you know practically but you know this is a nice head and shoulder as you see here you can see a head and shoulder being formed so it's actually usually when you get out from a channel that's when you can actually see your head and shoulder right so it's all about you know having your entry points on point and you're gonna win the long game that's the most important part that's our system and it's a working system so now how to handle your trades how to trade so usually when the market moves from the buy zone to the sell zone of an uptrend on the smaller time frame let's say example one hour it usually represents a correction what the correction is it's like a weak creation for, for a bigger time frame so it's some people use sell zones and buy zones on smaller time frames they don't see consistency because they are applying them incorrectly play the long game use bigger time frames know the overall direction so i want to show you an example of this let me see if i can find one euro usd this one here we had a nice reversal so let's first start to analyze it first so what we do first step we zoom out we look at the entire chart right that's our first step say we put in our trend lines so let me just put my line there i want to show you why i want to put it there this is my first target and i want it to be like a small zone that's the reason why i like using zones because we adjust for these two so we, we have a nice buy right usually on a resistance like i'm seeing here don't worry guys it's gonna be easy for you as well you know it takes practice but you can be able to see this easily like we do now as long as we have a one test here second test here we know this was going to be a strong one because on on a retest so we're losing one to gain three so now the purpose of me getting here was to show you what i meant we also have a nice resistance here i like having my resistance as a zone so we have a nice resistance zone here you can see now about touches we have which makes it a very strong support structure now which was a previous resistance now a support structure so what a lot of people do is they go to the 30 minutes chart they will see a sell oh i'm seeing a nice sell being set up but if you focus on that one hour that small time frame it's only a retest of a bigger time frame this is just simply a retest we're seeing an overall buy here right if you look closer to the daily chart we're seeing that we have a nice level of support and resistance at basically this point here just put it as already caters all of these points and let me basically put in the last one here that i see which is i'm gonna put this one here too because you know i want to make sure that it's gonna be my first take profit for swinging basically so as you can see here for euro usd guys we see a nice buy setup so it's like it's like a nice flag or you know ascending triangle as you can see here we're seeing a nice ascending triangle being set up right secondly reversal of trends must be confirmed from daily weekly or monthly charts that one is the most important right people just want to force their thing so i want to show you the weekly chart we use for gold that we had a nice a shooting star here because we were looking at our resistance we correctly placed our resistance and you can see here we're testing the old the one that we actually had in around 2014 was testing that's the nice buy that we had and we're testing resistance here so now we went for a sell and we backed a lot because we know how to properly apply them so in the four hour chart will give you the heads for this result so now entry on retest will give good quality management and placing protective stop loss always place a stop loss regardless if you see a perfect setup you know because in all honesty you know the market doesn't care about you you must always make sure that you protect your account so now you need to identify the levels of support and the reasons for your profit targets like i've been saying have an exit strategy know when you're going to close it 
So moving your stop loss, you understand, even though you want to swing, you want to swing for how long? You're going to lose the momentum of swing. You can swing with one stop loss and then it comes back up. You just lost momentum. You don't know when you're going to stop that swing too. So it's important to note. So now you lock your profits by adjusting the stop loss as your trades progress. So when it moves more, gives you like 30 pips, you can adjust the stop loss, you know, gives you more. Just You always know that your overall target is what? Hence, you always win the long game. Your losses are always small, but your profits are always big, right? And you can use small loss sizes. We, we, we grow one of our accounts easily using small loss sizes. We just want to show you that that's what we do. So this is one of the kind that we grow using the small lot. And if you can look close, we're using 0 0.5 and we're able to double that account weekly. That's when we had a nice volatile market and we were able to grow it. So the volatility gave us more entries and we're able to win. Right? as you can see so this one was basically you know a small take profit because it was a scalp that the reversal that you saw there and yeah, that's the kind of trades we also take so it will depend on the ones that you want how you apply the strategy we basically up to you so now the indicators that we use we use the moving average from 2050 to 200 fibonacci rsi and the atr which is average true range we use them to measure volatility i'm gonna cover why we do that so now indicators are useful for identifying the area of value and understanding the market condition like we've said before they help you understand the market condition so they summarize the price that's what they do so indicators are useful for you to know how if you know how to apply them correctly like i've been saying so most traders don't understand the purpose of indicators and you don't want to be like them so now let's go there and let me show you how we can apply uh a simple moving average okay i feel like we, yeah, we had a nice trend here so whenever you're in a nice trend that's being respected you can move a moving average of basically 200 to know whether you have a buy momentum or sell momentum as you can see as long as the market is above this we know that we have a nice buy momentum right using data from the past we saw that we're still in a nice buy area we only look for sales underneath it we look for overall buys as long as it's above you can see the we can see the momentum here as long as we have a trend a strong trend we would see the momentum above so that's why we know that okay now we we seeing a small cell momentum that's why i'm preparing my cells it's not an indicator it tells me what's the market condition now i'm looking for a cell people want to enter a cell here it's an, they say for them it's a trigger for me i understand that it's a condition what's the market condition the, the condition changed from a buy zone into a sell zone i have now an edge because i understand how to use my tools, which is very important. All right, so let's continue with our slides. So now it helps us define the trend. Like we saw that the MA, we know that the trend was now moving from a bullish trend to now a bearish trend. The area of value, we can see now it was acting as a nice support. It was supporting the trend. So now we're supporting the downtrend. When the entry trigger is we saw that now I can use it in the entry trigger as some sort. Because if I have a candlestick that means that's being formed there, I would also still enter because you know that's what we used to as our entry level. So that's the, the nice part we use our technical analysis, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Hi, that is FS Gojo Forex Mental, and on this lesson, we're gonna cover the secret to becoming a consistently profitable trader. So without wasting any further time, let's jump in. So most of professional traders are making hundreds to millions of dollars yearly. From trading forex right we have traders such as george soros adam cool michael marcus and one of my top favorites which is richard dennis what he did was he was able to take 1.6 thousand into 200 million dollars in just 10 years and on his quest to write the complete terror book he took 20 novice traders those are traders who didn't have any experience in trading and made a bet with his friend that he can turn them into professional traders so they took 20 million and turned it into 175 million in just five years proving yet again that forex trading is a skill that you can learn and not something that you should be born with so what these professional traders do is they apply a system to their trades that we have learned as well we're going to teach you how to apply it in your trades too so you must wonder what makes winning traders profitable right do winning traders have the ability to predict the future more accurately than you and me and the answer to that question is no right so you must think what is a secret to consistent trading profits the answer to that is professional traders have the ability to think statistically and exploit statistical edges 
they say that the casino always wins. So professional traders apply the very same system as the casino to make sure that they have a statistical advantage and that's how they win. They understand the mathematics behind all trading and that is a probability game. So we're going to apply the very same system and help you become consistently profitable. So then, as a forex trader, you need to understand that we need to have three points when you enter a trade. You need to have the entry level. That's where you're going to place your buy and sell. Secondly, you need to have your stop loss. That's the price where your trade exits with the loss. So most MHS, what they do is they enter into a trade without a stop loss, saying that they're definitely sure it's going to win. As a professional trader, I would bust their bubble because the problem is you need to understand that trading is a game of probability. You're not going to win all your trades. However, you need to plan your trades. Hence, you need to have a stop loss in place. When a trade goes against you, you can usually you can easily minimize the loss and close it. Right? So thirdly, you need to have a take profit. That's a price that you can actually exit your trade when you're in profit. So you need to have an entry, a stop loss, and you take profit. And that's how you can actually become consistently profitable. So I'm going to give you a small difference between, you know, um, an amateur and a professional trader so what amateurs do is they don't have uh, a winning system with their trades they have none so two percent traders always have a winning system with their trades so most traders trade forex like a hobby i can see some people depositing hundred dollars to make twenty dollars for a weekend and professional traders treat forex like a business hence it pays them like a business most forex traders are always gambling and rely most of the time on luck and professional traders understand that you need to apply proper risk management right a lot of people ask me questions like you know is forex trading risky heck driving is risky if you don't know what you're doing same as trading as you drive you need to have road rules like we do we have what we have trading rules and that's what helps us become consistently profitable so another thing most traders don't have a trading plan and professional traders have a statistical advantage by having a trading plan and a winning system so most traders are impatient and use many strategies to confuse them what professionals do is they're patient and they go deeper to master their own strategy so i'm going to help you formulate the profitable trading plan and that is by applying a risk ratio of one is to two right so when you enter into a trade you need to risk two percent of your capital to expect a potential return of four percent let's say for example you have a you have a winning strategy it can be 60 to 97 percent accurate However, let's say you're gambling and use the very same system and you lose 50, you win 50 trades. Using the risk ratio 1 is to 2, you can see that you can actually close 1% of your trades and win 2% and that's giving you an overall win. It gives you a statistical advantage, hence you always win overall. So that's how you firstly start to plan your trades. So I want to help you understand that using the ratio 1 is to 2 can help you attain consistency. So let me quickly come here. And show you what most professionals do and what MHS do. So what professionals do is they understand when you enter into a trade, you can win and lose, win and lose, win and lose. However, for you to have a graph like this, it means you win more than you lose. So that's basically winning 4% and losing 2%. That's why you overall you grow. So what MHS do is they enter into small 10 wins without any stop loss and only one loss to blow their account hence that's why they don't have consistency they only gamble hoping for more wins so the advice we can share with most traders is you know it's okay for you to lose 10 small losses as long as you win one big trade you know you can create wealth how do you do that you minimize your losses and also adjust your stop loss when you win to maximize your profits and that's what professionals do right so let's continue with our lesson as you can see you can usually use a system you can take a 5000 account you can take it to 21000 in just 13 weeks that's the very same system that we apply to our trades that allows us to take the 10000 that we made of a deposit and more than double our account as you can see it's a real account we took it to 20000 we're able to do that using no risk that's the same thing we want to do we want to teach you how to apply that we want to take you on a journey to help you become a consistently profitable trader right so then let me just say you're applying the system now and you have 20 trades in a good month and you have 20 trades in a bad month so using the very same system you can see that let me say you have a 60 percent win rate so you win 12 and you lose eight of your trades 
using the ratio 1 is to 2, you're expecting a potential return of 4% and a potential loss of 2%. You can see you make 40% win rate and you overall you make 32% per month. That is way above any bank can give you. So then, what if you have a bad month then, right? You lose more than you win. Would you make any profits? The answer is yes. Let's see. So you lose 12 of your trades and you only have 8 wins. Using the system allows you to see that you can have a potential return of 4% and lose only 2%. With that, you already win as well. So proving that for you to win, you need to win more than half the time and you can become consistently profitable. So want to help you how to trade, understanding that you know having a good system in place can help you become consistently profitable. So for you to make informal trading, you need to understand that you need to chase knowledge first, right? You need to first learn how to trade before you jump in. Forex trading is like anything else. The more you learn, the more you're going to allow yourself to be able to earn more. Just like we did as well. We are able to learn how to trade first. We first started by losing, right? And with all the knowledge that we have learned, we saved our money. And when we do have money now, we know how to properly use it to make more money. And that's what Forex does. So that's the end of our first lesson. Prepare for the next one. So see you on the next lesson.